115 tons of rice are harvested every year in the natural park of Albufeira. The rice harvesting leaves a waste called rice straw, which is composed of the stems and branches of the plant. Traditionally, farmers have disposed of this waste through incineration. However, this has a number of negative impacts. The Valencia City Council is developing a life project called EcoRice, financed by the European Union, whose aim is to give economic value to the rice straw with environmental practices such as combating erosion. Rice was one of the first wild plants that man domesticated for their consumption. Rice is the pioneer plant in agriculture. Rice cultivation began over 6,500 years ago in China. Rice and wheat are the most consumed cereals in the world and provide more than 50% of the calories present in the feeding of half of the world population. The Arabs were the first to introduce this gramine plant in our country around the year 700 after Christ. A thousand years later, the population of Ribera Baisha started to use the wetlands around the Albufeira lake in order to cultivate rice. At the beginning of the 20th century, this cultivation was at its peak through the covering of the great part of the lake for rice fields. This fact was recorded by one of the most international Valencian writers, Blasco Ibanez, in his novel Reeds and Mud. Helping my father transform the Albufeira into a rice field. Great, Tanit. How many loads have we got so far today? Six. In 1986, the Albufeira was declared Natural Park, a protected surface with 21,000 hectares, from which 70% are rice fields. This park would not be the same without the rice. Its cultivation is very important for the feeding of the birds. Moreover, when the water that irrigates the fields returns to the lake, it has a better quality, so this cultivation functions as natural purifier. Rice cultivation is part of the natural park. We have to preserve other natural values such as biodiversity and the number of species that visit the park. We also have to preserve the value of tradition and the cultural values of the farming activity of rice cultivation. Its economic value is also very important. We have to support farmers so that they can keep developing their work without creating an impact on the environment and even working for the nature preservation. Every year, 115,000 tons of rice are collected. Once the grain, stems and branches are separated, it remains what we know as straw. It is an important residue, for we are talking about more than 70,000 tons in the whole park. When the harvest is finished, the waste is left in the fields. There are various ways of disposing of this waste. The traditional way of doing it in Albufeira was to burn it. Many generations of rice farmers have burnt the rest of the harvest. However, this practice has a number of negative impacts on the environment. In the first place, it has negative impacts on the fauna due to the bad quality of air caused by the emissions of CO2 in the atmosphere and on the citizens from the urban centers around Albufeira. During the last days of September, the smoke invades the landscape and it affects many people. This is a real problem because organic material as well as organic and gaseous particles are being burnt. The patients complain that they cannot breathe. Exacerbations in the chronic pulmonary disease and even bronchial asthma have been proved. Avoiding the burning of the rice straw is the main objective of EcoRice, a life environment project of the Valencia City Council financed by the European Commission. During the last campaign, this pioneer initiative managed to collect 2,000 tons of straw for recycling purposes. EcoRice seeks to recycle the residue, that is to say, to give use to waste without any cost for the farmer. Rice straw has to be removed from the fields so that it is not burnt. Its removal has a cost, whose expenditure should be charged by the farmer. However, the farmer has a complicated economic situation. Therefore, we have to remove rice straw from the fields and try to take some economic profit with it. 
We have to find some use for the rice straw. A straw has many applications. During the golden area of the Valencian paper industry, rice straw was used for the making of paper paste. Previous projects to eco rice have tried to make biocompost or have even used rice straw to produce energy. Nevertheless, the last application of straw is the production of bio blankets for arid farming. We can close the circle within the agricultural sector. The very same rice straw that is being burnt in certain places and that have a negative impact on the environment can solve the rapidly increasing problem of lack of water in other places. The bio blanket is an innovative product that could give solutions to the lack of water in the olive and almond cultivation, amongst others. It consists of a plastic net stuffed with straw. The vegetal fiber spread on the field keeps the soil humid for a longer period, avoiding its dryness, above all, during the summertime. Furthermore, this product protects the soil against erosion. This way, strong rain does not affect the soil as much with this vegetation cover. The elaboration of blankets is currently undertaking an experimentation process. Technicians of this project have contacted the Valencian enterprise devoted to the rehabilitation of degraded areas and monitoring erosion. The first tests permit to be optimistic with this project. In principle, this product is of good quality to create blankets. We thought that the result would be worse, but it has indeed a long fibre, which makes easier to sew blankets of quite a good quality. Right now, we are studying if the application of rice straw into dry fields would work, as well as into slopes. Since this is one of the other prospects in order to avoid the burning of this straw. This enterprise from Quart de Poblet is interested in elaborating blankets with rice straw and offering them in their catalogue. It is not the first time that they work with bio blankets, for they had already worked with bio blankets made of coconut fibre. This product is used mainly in public works, roads and highways for the covering of slopes in order to avoid soil erosion. The possibility of profiting from such cheap product as rice straw and which due to its proximity does not have great economic transport charges could be an incentive for other enterprises, not even only for the elaboration of blankets. Rice straw could be also used as mulch for hydro seeding. For this purpose, however, we should know if we can grind up the straw because it is a very long fibre and it wouldn't be possible to use it as it is originally. Another option would be to use it to make vegetation bio-rolls for riverbeds and channel borders. The first tests have been carried out in the town of Cosentaina in the county of Comtat. An olive cultivation will put its farming under test during a few months in order to analyse trees' reaction to these blankets. The results will be obtained on medium and long term, but the temperatures foreseen in the summer and the lack of rain will make the soil suffer. They are crops that survive only by the contribution of rainwater. Therefore, if we take into account the high temperatures and the evaporation of superficial water, we find fields with a very dry soil layer. For us, the first 10 centimeters of the crop loads are very important. As you see, in the first place, it is a product that preserves the soil, humidity, and lastly, when this vegetal material decomposes, it becomes humus. This cultivation, which is being tested in Cothentaina, will serve as a guinea pig for the research of the eco rice project. The advantages of this blanket are not tested on the ground yet, and the result of these fields will depend on the commercialization of bio blanket. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How is it going? Fine, putting things together. Is it hard? No, it's quite easy. We just have to adjust it to the trees and this keeps humidity, I guess. Because we've been doing it just for a few days. Let's see. It does work, doesn't it? Yes, the trees will notice it right now and they will not suffer. The good thing about it is that this will keep the humidity for the whole year. 
What has been done is to test the olive cultivation. The blankets have been spread out at random on some terraces. This way, it will be possible to compare it with the other trees. The humidity levels among trees are controlled periodically. When the summer is over, the results will be measurable in relation to the harvest. However, it has to be worked at long term due to the belated implementation. We believe this will increase the production. Depending on the humidity of a tree, the difference in the production can increase twice or twice and a half the production of olives. This has been studied by the University of Seville. An irrigated tree produces the double of a non-irrigated tree. Apart from keeping humidity, the blanket reduces significantly weed growth. We have to take into account the fact that if the tree has not enough water and has to share it with other plants, the water contribution to the cultivation will be reduced. Weed is, however, often necessary in order to avoid erosion, but the blanket carries out its function. The net and the distribution of straw allow that the vegetation grows freely and increases the protection of the soil. Eco-rice does not only work in one direction, but also diversifies its studies in order to give the straw multiple functions. This seeks to avoid the burning of the straw and manage that the great majority of rice farmers welcome the collection of straw. The exploitation of cattle farming is an alternative that this project offers. Another of the targets of the rice straw is cattle. It can be used for both cattle bed and fodder, that is to say for their feeding. We are trying to find farms in the area that could be interested in using this straw and even in making agreements to ensure that the straw from the fields have a final purpose. The straw's high content of silicon and elasticity has always made difficult its use as fodder for animals. This project has been tested in the surroundings of the Albufeira Natural Park and the result is quite encouraging. It had always been said that due to the fact that rice straw is a longer fiber, it caused more indigestion problems. Nevertheless, it has been proved so far that animals did not have any problem of indigestion. So animals have a fodder of quality. Wheat straw is rice straw's main competitor because it's easier to grind it up and has more protein. However, a little bit of grain does always remain in the rice straw and it contributes to a complete diet for animals. The main difference between rice and wheat straw is the length of the fiber. After all, the feeding of the cattle is long fiber. Long fiber stimulates the ruminates of the animal. This way, the animal does not have to eat just concentrates, but also chew and move the food to the stomach in order to digest. In any case, if they succeed in recycling a residue, avoiding the bad impact on the environment produced by the burning of the straw, the objectives of eco-rice will have been reached. I believe we are going through a period of change in a transsectorial approach in all sectors. We have to continue with our human development and our economic activities. But at the same time, we have to reduce negative impacts on the environment that surrounds us, our ecosystem, that is to say, the house where we live in. 400 years have gone by since our ancestors modified completely the landscape of Albufeira, one of the most important Mediterranean lakes and a vast wetland area transformed into rice fields. Now it is up to us to reach a real sustainable development for the future of the ecosystem, rice cultivation and the vicinity of the natural park.